self-published her first collection of writing called Writings from the Underground, The Earthworm Chronicles, <laughs> which I think is a great title. And uh, I haven't seen it, but perhaps you have some here. And uh, it's, a, it's a fine pleasure to uh, have you here as a feature. So please welcome Lindsay Rose Arnold. to hear poetry and to share the feeling that's conveyed through poetry. And uh, today I was wondering if anybody else, if any of you living, feeling, breathing beings is as astounded as I am by the color green that's all around us right now. It's really important to remember that that color green exists in us. It is our holiness, it is our breath, it is our living. And that we need to remember that and not just remember it, but celebrate it and embrace it and realize that that is the unity that's moving all through this earth. Um, a friend of mine, is in a psych ward at Benedictine Hospital. And for the past two weeks, I've been going every day to visit him and kind of keep him sane because he's a brilliant 16-year-old child. And it's been this incredible experience to see just how much our system fucks with our brilliant children. And um, when, they, when they can't conform because it goes against their spirit, to be a part of this, uh, they really suffer some heavy consequences sometimes. So I just had to share that because <laughs> it's really weighing on me. Um, so I didn't know what I was going to read, and I was kind of freaking out that I was going to be featured because uh, a lot of times the stuff I write, I write it, and then maybe I read it, and then I let it go, and I don't really want to see it again for a while. And I, I have been writing a lot, and what I did was I, I typed a lot of stuff out, pieces and, and pieces from this latest journal, and uh, they kind of came together as a story. So this is sort of a story in, in a bunch of movements, and it moves kind of like a river sometimes, slow, sometimes fast, and sometimes it hits a rock, and sometimes it's the most beautiful thing you've seen and felt. So. Just, uh, just listen, I guess. <clears throat> we ate the crusts of our freedom as big frightened men with guns positioned near their dicks made their way down the hallways we crave as our safety. There was nowhere left to go. They attacked us in our homes, in our dreams, in the morning when we took our breakfast in a time that used to be sacred. In dreams, it was nighttime. My son and I were wandering through dark basements of a large old building where someone had been murdered. No police were there quite yet and we smeared our hands through bloody trails, bloody trails on the walls and floor, realizing our fingerprints would remain, but we kept doing it anyway. They eventually came for us. Watching the sun throw its last graces over electric spirits waiting in the clouds, a milder version of the Catskills is a familiar backdrop, and the myriad fingers of omni-growing trees penetrate the ether raised above in imaginative tones of blue-violet. Eyes, lakes, summer storms, airplane wings, royal cutlery, bird feathers, ice. I let the morphous sky pull up the moon and wait for instructions. The sky as oyster shell interior, the planet as one enormous shell. Ah, the very first star of the evening. 
biting fear to become itself. What lessons these distant creatures offer the litterers of this earth. Now one, two, three, four, more poking, poking. The sky is alone no longer. Huge planes tear low through the atmosphere, disrupting the eternal story of our winged beings. I wish, I wish I could breathe in their fumes and exhale the secret of forgiveness across the land they warp. His belt is visible now. I'm in love with this warrior as he is born into the sky, a predestined opening calculated by a conspiracy of the gears. The moon is unashamed of her brilliant pregnancy as she melts her way across the sky. Poetic protection. I've got the poetically transmitted disease, an infestation of truth I cannot scratch. I cannot lie silent in cherry bark canoes. Bush would have wanted guns, would have sewn us together in indigenous uprisings with machetes and cruise missiles with smart bombs, intelligent enough to deconstruct language. Now we'll speak in beeps and tones through buttons and bunkers. Now I'll roll face clashing with forest floor, foreign home of the feet. What is it that we walk on? Humans name things and by their vowels assert value and through the tremors create reality. The river, it's been named, there's a sign, but they've forgotten what it is. What do you bring, wind? What do you carry on and on through the centuries? I heard you once crying from the cave in Egypt that spat you out, sailing away on billows of lies and grief. I tried to find you but got lost in the branches. I write to soothe none other than the spirit of Alora Ingalls gone mad by the truth of her little house. For an Emily Dickinson who got soused and made love and got raped became a dove and flew away. Calamity. In the face of our forgetfulness, we succumb to the repetition of evils spread out through our lives and history as webbed lightning bolts. I listen for the ancestors tonight and at all hours when the moon is blocked by clouds or outshone by the sun. Heavy on the pavement, our voices fall, we think, like teardrops from the childhood of raped promises. Flowered babies become broken songs. Moist mothers piss toxins of contaminated vertebrae, and there is rhythm in the river. I hope for a reappearance, for a second coming, or maybe a first coming that could be the keyhole to the universe. I'm lost in the branches, reaching so hard for the cerulean, paralyzed by the winds. Wondering what the hell I got myself into in being born and looking for a true companion amidst this chaos. I pray for that opening. The sun of ages climbs strong and precise through the wilderness of atmosphere, the infinite movie through which men walk alone and searching. The bloody sun of dreams rises and sets ignorant of belief nonchalantly disregarding the burning structure of men's souls, the part of them so desperate to hear themselves that they might believe. Our experiences wrap around us like prickly blankets, gifts from a sunset known as death. It becomes us. Memories and bleeding dreams, light and uncertain future, how did we come this far still breathing? We try to hide from ourselves as we feel ourselves opening and closing, and in the interim, we dance. I danced with you once in our kitchen, and there was love there, but it was afraid. Can being alive ever be too much? It cannot for long after our bodies decompose. We are always very much alive, so I want to find you. Dad, I find pieces of you in all these broken faces, and I clearly remember the mysterious places where we celebrated or aggravated certain pains. Now I drink through 
plastic locked up in a circle and permanent in transition. I pull up a certain slant of light from a sunset when I dreamt myself on fire from a rock looking out over a valley that was me. The very pinkness from inside her pulled and strung along the skyway, chilling her eardrums made her question what she listened to. Trash and unearthed attempts at love affairs trickled past her fingertips and legs on the rock, the byproducts of societal experiments, and it was the same flow in the streets of crying. It is the exact water all the way through, but only a few recognize this. Even fewer see it runs in a circle, so will it ever be pure? Ever clear of Babylon's ruin? Soiled now by my father's yellowing eyes and the violent hands of one before, can I pluck my forgetting from the movement of tides? Can I offer my body and the voice behind my eyes to the rain as it comes to sacrifice itself for our healing? The crows discuss this in their manner not unlike the rowdy drunkenness of the dark streets where artificial suns shield question in the shadows and skateboards become transportation to the divine. Their wings beat the pieces of this broken city into a timely mosaic of future projections and the screen projects on into the open night, particles of dust and drama floating on the interim light. What meaning do we gather from this image? The building inspector condemned our structure as we fell apart in each other's arms and prayed for understanding. Eyes flicked sharply open, a paranoid tear running away from the corner, desperate to be absorbed in heavenly white pillows. These graces, we only know half of what they are and of ourselves a smaller fraction, but we fight hard. We fight hard. Iraqi liberation shows us ourselves, and we are not who we said we would be. We are so much more and still not free. <coughs> Dying for each other loosely as if we could be resurrected on TV while our government is drowning in the toxic rage of sewerocracy. Out of wild forest, we sculpted modernity. Out of God, created lies that we all could believe so we can set ourselves free. One ear to the earth, one glassy eye to the sea, the truth lies in communication between the two and the emerging vessel called we. <clears throat> he called me mama and I hid in the stonewall cracks. Vibrating histories of achievement and philosophy pushed through soil all around me. So many ghosts to contend with, his voice over Joni's Canada, our souls touching, my veins melt into imaginations of what was and what might have been had truth not insisted on living loudly. Here I list at the opening dawn the uncertainties by which we breathe. We've named this ghost love and swear by its invisibility that we are all martyrs for the cause, for the invisible order and decision. Lacking trust in childhood, we break our houses one after another, never comfortable with sleep. I am done masquerading for kisses. I will follow the thunder and lightning bolts now, unstoppable. Hard in the confines of his face, I question my solitude. Twenty-year-old body pushed and betrayed by hormones dating back to the beginning of life. So where does intention originate? And how did it become the conscious choices I follow? And from where does happiness come? I lay with his warmth crackling in the fires of our bodies, parts touching, so nervous and excited I cannot relax a single second for fear of letting myself go too far in the exhale and leaving my love open to misinterpretation. Though I feel now as I lay with all the gushing emotion and philosophical observation bottled and breathing tight in my gut and chest, I feel he might never understand all I have to share, and I explode because of it. 
Honesty. We think we know this concept, but we know nothing save what we are taught and how we grow. What does it mean to be honest? Truthful is a synonym, but what does that mean? Telling something as it really happens? Not being afraid of exposing flaws in your own character to someone else? Matching written or spoken word to an event or state of being or movement? I mean, what basis has honesty? In our daily interactions, we try to get through a life <coughs> whose origin, place, and purpose we know not. So what makes an honest man? And does the contract of trust go hand in hand with his achievement? My people, we are ragged, lost soldiers, warring lifetimes to break bread. Shores and footlines in mechanical motion, pumping the tides in moonbeam red. My friends, among those who trod in the river, some saw clear to the bottom and what comprised it there. But without knowing what else was underneath, they dared their feet walk on. Was this honesty? Is there a medicine science that wraps around your necklace that far? Enough tearing, the small pills soothe the symptoms, killing the creature born in you beneath beautiful mechanics on your lethal way down the street. Mother Earth is the whore in our movie, medicine necklace sliding deep into the openings, lick the textured healing as shampooed tongue becomes music, food forgotten in the dusty afternoon of immigrant memories, of love and courage. Those two with faces drained, reenacting child sex on television, lost soldiers in the homeland. I write because I can burn the words, leaving no mark behind except on my soul. When I speak, my thoughts permanently adhere to the listener, and there is no escape. In my pensive stride, I feel the footfalls of the writers, thinkers, observers of all other times, and I wonder if they can hear me. How perfect the swarms of maple helicopters cascading to rebirth on the ground. Now they land in water, the abortion of a tree. Where are the angry pro-lifers? Why do they not thrash about in the river to save every last suicide maple? Water changes everything. <coughs> How the small branch cluster of leaves lives exuberantly in its airy dance from tree to river. It flashes and twirls, whips and flips, all without fear. Without fear, in midair, fast and passionate, it shows all it can. Shortly done, hits the water, freedom seized, reevaluates its purpose, preparing for an altogether different life, tied down and floating. Inside a quivering belly, formerly the center of skateboard handstands, another dream grows. All the hope, confusion, victories, fear, exclusion, pain, joy, memory of being converges, gathering mass, and the tangles become human, become child, become visible anew. Out the end game. And they expect him to be normal, to masquerade his grief in straight lines and matching colors. Ones who've never found themselves, never found themselves in wonder and care of the natural world, the true mother, tell him he's just like all the other troubled children. Medicate him till the ocean sparkle seething in his eyes goes blank, and one by one the dollar figures accumulate in a fat man's computer. He cannot breathe, this child. Incarcerated in psychological prison, awaiting the guns. When you can't breathe, you die. The bitter and ferocious past gleams on in our fingertips, never out of reach, never too far away. Can one solid angel wrap her ribbons round the tomb? That the life may be celebrated before its end. 
I see the tempest of babies without fathers to provide and mothers homeless in their breast. I see greens of healing dancing in the forest regardless of our oblivion. I hear the maiden cries of ancestors whose dreams restless unlock themselves from the riverbank where they've been watching, seeing, waiting. I see the unending tracks of incredible passionate desire and the mediocre submissions of a race with collective thought patterns. The structure, the running, advancing through a field of littered worries, sensitive and resting on the expansion of those who speak the earth and the others hoarding its wealth. These two breathe at odds with, with each other and visionless masses ride the currents. I see multiple possibilities of right and the splintering finality of denial brought to dust by a bird song. I sing for flying. I sing for seeing the wild heart through the brick walls of the hospital, shaking. I see the scars of talented hooks cast slyly and brazenly into my invisible orb, soft tissues worked by myriad fingers of my father, the triggers of war in any land. I want to be beautiful. A beautiful image interwoven with real toughness and one hand reaching out always. I feel the timeless burning on my temples where the sun's rays are most concentrated and I return to a summer gone by, riding my Peugeot bicycle across the Pont Édouard Didier, 8.30 a.m. in Avignon crossing the Rhone River in its grand flow of centuries with the high sun testing the strength of my heart until I reach the shady enclosure of the walled city to absorb the radiance of French people beginning a French day. Sometimes I look in the mirror and my petite statue française astounds me. I could have been a Parisian prostitute, a Provençal farm girl, I see the sparkle of the ocean. It's the same in every living eye. The origins have not left us. By the rocks, I left my journal. Who will read it? Who will know? The fastenings of my desires and the grandeur of our woe. It's written there in pen ink, marred paper, like soiled snow. Thank you very much, Lindsay. That was Lindsay Rose Arnold. is uh, all kinds of things, one of which is he's a good friend of mine, uh, a real treasure here in Woodstock, a publisher, a writer, uh, let's see, he has a long list himself, let's see, Sicilian, American Buddhist, Hindu freak, artist, anthropologist, archivist, and uh, he says he's been a poet since he lived on Allen Ginsberg's commune in the, in the mid-80s. And it's a great pleasure to have Shiv Miravito here, so please welcome Shiv. Thank you, Philip. Uh, my name is Shiv Miravito, and I'm the publisher of Shivistan Press. And there's, I have uh, eight titles on the back table back there, if you want to take a look at them. They're all printed with handmade paper in Kathmandu, Nepal. And my first book that I published is called Welcome to Freaksville. It's a book of my poetry and I'm very happy to have two, pe two of the people that it's dedicated to are in the audience tonight. So I'll start by reading one poem from that. It's called, and it's dedicated to you, the audience. 
You are my best friend. You are my best friend because you are so compassionate. You would never harm another sentient being. You are my best friend because you are a brilliant conversationalist, nonconformist, and creative artist, musician, actor, saint. You let your freak flag fly high. You always place the needs of others before yours. You are selfless, nothing and everything. You are eternally youthful, yet possess the wisdom of the ages. We have always been the best of friends and always will be. You love me as much as I love you and everyone. is called Maha Mail of Bliss Trip and other poems. And it has kind of a long novella in verse about uh, going to India to the world's largest gathering, the Kuma Mela. But I'm going to read one poem out of it that uh, appeared in uh, Longshot Magazine. It's called Sunset Slums. Old train waddles and crawls along grimy outdoor outskirts of Allahabad revealing intoxicating insights of slum life. Naked babies play in brown pools of sewage, chased by hairy black pigs and water buffaloes, geometric piles of cement houses and roofs, pale, blue, green, yellow, every back door open to train tracks, plastic-strewn, shitting jungle. Circles of dark men play cards, squatting women washing aluminum pans. Rickshaw wallas aimlessly glide, looking back and forth, stopping to squat and piss, or fix oily bike chains. Lucky schoolboys fly tattered paper kites from rooftops, their minds soaring high above the slum into the sweeping pinks and orange iridescence of the exploding sky. Sunset Slums. So I also have a magazine that's called Wildflowers, a Woodstock Mountain Poetry Anthology that, uh, let's see, I think I'm up to the fourth issue is coming out pretty soon. It's gonna have uh, Penny Arcade, Thurston Moore, Dave Kime, Andy Clausen, a bunch of people in it. Uh, this is the first one. Phillips in this one. Uh, so I'm going to read a poem from that that's kind of seasonal. It's called Rolling Thunder. Rolling thunder rattles the windows and shakes the house. Bright bursts of lightning fill the room with bouncing electric ions. Heavy duty earthquaking energies flowing from the sky's dark heights through fertile air, damp with lilac essence, and the scents of a thousand other wet spring blossoms. Rolling thunder flows through our homes of wood, metal, stone, that we mistakenly suppose unshakably solid. Rolling thunder flows through our fragile flesh bag bodies, quivering our blood, guts, bones, and minds, Rolling thunder flows through the Catskill Mountains, through the grounded bedrock, beneath the pregnant sky, beneath the damp home, and beneath our sleepy selves. Rolling thunder vibrates with change. Spring growth rumbles into summer. <clears throat> I was just in uh, India and India, Nepal again for three months over the winter. So I'll read a few uh, new poems that I wrote there. This one is called Everyday Auspicious Procession. Om Bur Bhuva Svaha Tat Savatur Varenyam Bhargodevasya Dimahi Dio yo ya prachodayat 
seven water-bearing goddesses, each with two full round amphora of cool, clear water from the black well, each with one on her shoulder and one on her hip, tree nymphs striking an ancient twice-bent pose, each with head covered with cloth of green and rust swathed around behind, leaving mahogany midriffs bare. Each stands around the spring, each bends and washes her delicate feet seductively. After each offers oblations to unseen nature spirits, they each refill their round pots and proceed slowly away, leaving in a languid line without smiling into the heat of the day. Om Bhur Bhuva Svaha Tat Sabatur Varenyam Pargo Devasya Vimahi Dio Yo Na Prachodayat This next one This next one is called Frog Boy. And this was something I observed outside my window in Kathmandu. Small, dark beggar boy sits around stupa outside my window, convulsively jumpy namaskar mode, like a frog trying to catch flies. Every time a Tibetan woman goes by doing kora, circumnambulating the stupa, immersed in counting mantras, he jumps up and prostrates himself, touching his head to their feet. Most women are so scared, they scream and jump and sometimes hit him. He notices I am watching and laughing. An old Tibetan woman gives him a big donut in a black plastic bag. He takes a bite and puts it back in the bag and starts to bonk himself on the head with it. Very fast. When he tires of this, he grabs a tall monk's foot and won't let go until the monk produces a crumpled one rupee bill, two cents. When Frog Boy tires of begging, he goes through the garbage, left at strategic night pickup points in Bodhana, ripping the bags, and he makes a big mess. <laughs> So um, I advertised that I was going to read something from my upcoming book, Sexy Monkey, yeah. which is yeah. kind of nastier stuff, you know, not on that spiritual travel bent kind of thing. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to read the more juicy stuff because you have to buy the book for that. So, yeah, so that's one of my upcoming books. Another upcoming book I have that's not so juicy is going to be called Yoga A Go Go. That's one of my other books coming out. So these are some haikus that are in Sexy Monkey. Big fat drunken slob. Who's it gonna love ya when all the fun is done? Big bone brown bus boy. Do some fries come with that shake? When do you get off? Power to pussy! of all human life, goddess incarnate. Addicted to lust, samsaric delusion, but you just can't kick it. This one is actually by Quentin Crisp. One should never share a narrow double bed with a wide single man. I've been there. <laughs> Sex revolution. Alternatively, all right to do it or not. Phallic effigies 
Mushrooms pierce the forest floor, strung with pearls of dew. Tibetan monks vow to never have intercourse in an orifice. <laughs> Throbbing sex organs wield mystical energies welded together. Cuando te quieres, yo soy enamorado contigo, amigo. So, okay, that's some haikus in there. Sexy monkey. This is a brand new one that I wrote for Sexy Monkey. It's called Real Men. Yeah. And it's dedicated to Eartha Kid. <laughs> America loves real men most because they are big and strong and stupid. <laughs> real men sit on the couch and watch football and baseball and basketball on TV and drink beer. Real men do not knit or drink herbal tea. Real men eat steak and freedom fries. Real men do not eat tofu. Real men do not want to protect the environment. Real men are a bunch of fucking animals. Real men like dogs, not cats. But real men like pussy more than anything. Real men wear aftershave, antiperspirant, and deodorant cause the chicks dig it. Real men do not do foreplay or wear condoms. Real men accomplish their goal and roll over and go to sleep. Yay. Real men have rock hard 10 inch gleaming erections and real men are always circumcised so that it looks like a weapon, like a shiny nuclear missile, not like a benevolent baby elephant's trunk. Real men do not dance wash dishes, clean toilets, nurture, or change diapers. Real men like to play with their guns. Real men shake hands firmly. Real men never hug. Real men love their mothers, but real men never say it. Real men wear uniforms. Real men never wear pink. Real men don't ask and don't tell. America loves real men most because they are disposable. Yay. Thank wow. you. So I'm just going to read one more that's uh, also a focal point in Sexy Monkey. It's called Unrequited Love. To all the boys I've loved before, with perfect bodies, lips, toes, and more, how often I wish to be your drunken whore. I invited you to stay overnight, but you stayed four. I tried to so hard to entertain you, but you're a crashing bore. I wanted to discuss my feelings, and you begin to snore. I know I would love you with all my being and with every pore, but after accepting joints, beer, and compassion, you bolt out the door. I should have known in this heart what was in store, but now the unrequited raven within me quoteth, never more. Thank you. That was a Chief Virabito, a real person. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not familiar, you should, you should, you certainly should check out uh, his role. His will be here. He promises, not here, but at Joshua's on the seventh of July. June seventh. June seventh. It's the first poetry orgy of the season, and uh, Richard's going to be the first teacher. It's going to be his book release party for. Welcome, Richard. <laughs> Um, 
going to be reading from two books tonight because I'm also doing a self-published one called Bus Rides and Other Means of Travel Between the Realms of Death and Semen. <laughs> Who's going to accompany me? I'm the first. with a scream while I wonder, while I shoot it down from the clouds with a vicious dream. What savagery am I, lost in the night and armed with paper goods instead of a heart's knife? I aim high, shooting low at your notebooks. I tear your treetops down with an updraft of vaporous typings, bewildered cocktail musings, stoned images of sex and decay in between the cottages. I fly in your face with a pickaxe of pineal juices, cavernous doubt, my only neighbor. I choose a moment to squirt your memory into my pseudo-vagina. <laughs> A moment passes like road rage. And I tear at my stitches, beating my chest into two lumpy piles to spread about you like poisonous pillows in the gardens. I am crying up at the moon slivers, at the stardust showering down radioactive kisses. I am planting the flowers of murder and God love in between the crickets, in between the piano shoutings, in between your pants and moans. And then I recline into your tender grave of teeth. Mothers of creation, the beautiful fat ladies are singing in the creek water while braiding each other's fine long hair. Sun shines, sun sets, moon time comes, the creek runs red with creation, the fullness of time's giggles joins in the chorus, the drumming of mountains' movements underscores the unending moment with the fluidity of heartbeats, hands talking in the air like moth wings, fluttering poetry emitting all the emotions of the earth, forever dancing unfettered while the sky looks on. And this one, I know is in a deep blue dream because it's here in front of me. It's called Lilith. Yeah. I am the sum of all mothers fucking, said the woman with the opening thighs, large bosoms, and the glowing eyes. I am the slut, the one who births and then destroys. I am the darkness and the face smiling down as you leave my womb to climb into my arms. I am the sum of all mother's loving and all mother's hatred. I am all violence and nurturing, flowers and bones and blood flowing like a river towards the ravenous sea. Am I the archetype that you fear most when it is I who I 
When it is I who am on top of you, when it is I that holds the sword and the power, am I the antithesis of testosterone, the crusher of gonads and their egos? Yes, I am. Thoughts in my mouth when you placed your fingers between my lips. There is no meditation tonight, just me going to bed broken. It's like you put thoughts in my mouth when you press your fingers between my lips, but I have forgotten all the words. There is no meditation tonight, just me going to bed broken, alone again. Maybe I was cute when I was 14, you said, but what remains now, I wonder. The pillow smells so familiar, repeating my heartbeat back to me, that I'll spend my nights and days in its safe arms. Though it retreats as I sink into it, it does not move fast enough to get away. Every time I dream and then forget how, every time I dream and then forget, the pillow is my constant and my comfort, even as your eyes melt away into the mattress, into the sky of etheric mists, until you are just a footnote in a poem, lost in the shuffle of sun and moon and REM cycles. The love box recalled. Where has my love gone? Into dirty storage boxes, perpendicular to the idiot box, hidden beneath a soap box, a litter box for the nursing puppies of depravity, a window box of opportunity inviting madness in, twisting little cardboard limbs into origami contortions, twisting little white press board limbs into origami weapons, screaming papers, faces of pain, of loneliness, inconsistency, Consolable loneliness, tormented newsprint balloons of pain, falling effetely from pain spilling mouths of kerosene and matches in the back room. Where has my love gone? Where has my love gone? Into ashes on the hillside of despair or into some small wooden box of memory where even my eyes cannot see, boxed in like a gift with a bow. Hospital stay. The smell of cigarettes and cheap cologne, the length of legs, the depth of eyes, more medical trips and taxi cab drives, blood tests, x rays, candy bars from vending machines, visitors in lab coats, questions, touches from cold metal, cold skin, antiseptic aromas waiting in cold rooms in backless hospital gowns, a flash of skin from the hot patient next to me, an inviting smile, a grope of crotches, a wheelchair comes to take me away. quills and bullets. <coughs> Scripto-superstick 
medium point, Mexico, blue inked lyric notes of a madcap Indian, embracing the religions of the thin nose conquerors, lead pencil dicked bureaucrats, waving crucifix shotguns, the Pueblo, the Pueblo caving in on the past, extra hard lead, super fine point, erasable black inked double edged swords, ugly outright lies written pretty on fine parchment, smudge proof, fade proof, but not fireproof, long houses teepees, sweat lodges, candles to the parchment, big super unleaded turbines, locomotive thunder across buffalo plains. Everything is whitewashed, revisionist history. Wakantanka, Wakantanka, why see you ho? He who steals the fat with the two thin lips, hail, hail, O oh God of death. Let us write poems to you, sing of your stink around campfires, write your hymns and odes in blood, super fine point scriptograph delete, a whole new world strives to forget you. Download this, sucker of goats. Chupacabra on the Midnight Magazine, a strange universe of disposable pens etched onto a fiber optic filament, smaller than a pinprick to a side of beef, grade A stamp, horse flesh, blue ink. Indians learn to scalp by watching white men on TV. In movies, we see savages, but whose side was more so? Who sewed up the Earth Mother's lips, expecting her to live forever beneath skyscrapers and concrete chastity belts? Strip mine her mounds in the ultimate unnecessary mastectomy. Who wasn't shot the first arrow? Scripto, super stick, medium point, Mexico. Who wrote down the words? Who filled the book that gave so many over to cry war for whatever selfish and sick reasons that they could rationalize in little inkblot Rorschach minds? When novels walk between the worlds, when they cross between the blue ink lines, do they look back to find pens stuffed in their backs like so many sharp-edged, too fine knives? Some of our fingers, once broken, never heal. And Cincinnati's not so bad in passing. We cannot mend that which is shattered beyond repair. We cannot hope to make things clear. We try to type, we try to write, but all bones do not always move. And fingers, once crushed, do little more than point in odd directions and jut uselessly out into space in such ways as to make them unable to even be counted on or upon. They throw you off with optic elusiveness, illusions, Fingers where there should not even be. Which way do they go, George? Which way do they go? And have we ever... And we have been through more bus terminals than we ever knew existed. Buses going every which way. Very confusing. Information desk clerks not even seeming to know all the ways that they will go. And when a lady misses her bus, is cut off, pushed out of line, steps out of line, screaming at all the workers as they come, her drama unfolding like a pocket knife, a free floor show at no extra cost, getting no more flies with honey than with attitude. We all look busy averting eyes. Eyes, checking parcels and packages, baggage and for tickets, until we finally reboard and flee, going God knows only where, far flung down the corridors of mystery and down highways, past landscapes like movie sets, visible from our windows like TV screen progressions, plotless and plodding towards nowhere for only the costs of our tickets. All aboard, all aboard for parts unknown, all aboard for parts and bones. Claim your seats and claim your bag, just don't touch the flaming fag. <laughs> <coughs> Bus stops with a wheeze and a cough. <coughs> I'm doing lots of that. Every time the bus stops, a wave of addicts rushes forth. Gotta have a smoke, gotta have a smoke. It's sort of funny, except that it's so sad how every time the bus breathes, 40 cigarette smokers yawn forth. 
Is it time for a smoke? Is it time for a smoke? Every time the bus farts, the stink of tobacco abusers sallies forth, a cloud of people coughing and wheezing just can't clear their lungs for nothing. Like my dad, who died from lung cancer. Gotta have a smoke, gotta have a smoke. Every time the bus stops, the wave of addiction rushes forth. You can smell the rehab on some of them. You can smell the cancer in some of them. Black lungs are unforgiving, and the wave of addiction does not stop for gas. The collapse. Here we build our homes, scabbing over the earth. Apostles of real estate, devotees of hate, flesh eating virus of a race. Can't win, not at this pace. Can't win, living in fields of garbage, dyeing our land with blood. We bulldoze the forests, the villages, while we toss our trash out into the wind. Here we build our castles, no matter what the cost. We are miners, boring like maggots. Dull as dust and scabies mites jettison into the space between our uptown nurses and the backs of our skulls, saying our prayers through the nights, calling those who are different crazies, freaks, and faggots as if these were bad things. We sit like kings presiding over our funeral dirges, and we are nothing more than vassals, playing in the mud, fighting our urges, peasants too dumb to clean our own waste, and we are soaking in it. Here we build bridges to the past and then burn them. Here we build upon ancient knowledge until it collapses beneath the weight of the new. Here we build our playgrounds labeled obsolete. Here we bury our dead, we check our luggage at the door, check our borders for the incoming hordes, make promises to our children that could only be lies, eat our fatty American foods, applying the fat directly to our fat ass. Check out mine, I have cellulite. <laughs> All in the name of the American way, the new world order, the real Third Reich, one world culturalism, the long cold night, super value meals, and somewhere in the process we blink or we forget to blink and we are buried under the progress of our own debris. Roadshow. Do not leave your valuables on the seats, he says, as we steal the seats. The bus company is not responsible for anything left behind. The bus company is not responsible for anything said by your leftist behinds. Please avoid speaking about politics, religion, gross national products, death, taxes, and stepping beyond the front yellow line. While the bus is in motion, the bus line is not responsible for personal injury, choice of country of origin, final destination, or familial affiliation. The bus company is not responsible. The bus company is not responsible. The bus company is not responsible for time and place of death, for determining of your, if your china patterns match your upholstery, or for the color and or particular shade of your own personal earwax. Do not leave your valuables behind on the seats. Do not leave your loved ones behind you on the seats. That is, if you can find any seats left behind. Do not place sharp objects up your behind. Do not run with scissors or modeling paste or find French pate. Do not hold out hope upon hope that someday you will find somebody to love your sorry ass. Do not sit in the first 10 seats. They are reserved for visiting dignitaries. Do not pass go. Do not wait for good dough. Do not expect to find that your luggage has safely arrived at the end of the road. <laughs> the long ride home. Oh, beneath gray skies, Golden fields turn to bronze or to rust. Figures in black grow three times more ominous. Anxiety rises like mercury in the thermometer of the throat. The power of the witch expands outwards into rippling rings, and it becomes easier for the odd among us to blend in, even if just a little. <laughs> it is 
is times like these that I can almost touch your face, your face veiled by time. <laughs> like a scar behind hospital gauze that retreats beneath brighter lighting as if it had eyes and its eyes were burning in their sockets. Across the aisle from me, the handsome black man smells as if he has not showered in the length of many days or weeks. My eyes tear as if burned by onions as the sun begins to set and a gray day grows even grayer, even darker until the man across the aisle on the unlit bus begins to fade away into shadows. Fields become lapping waves upon petroleum oceans. And I never knew that Texas could grow so dark. The bus rides like a stagecoach into the dark crevice of the night as someone far away touches my thigh and sighs like a nocturnal beast that has finally cornered its prey.